The Sega Mega Drive, a console with such power and grace it would have inspired epic poetry in ancient times. Nowadays, it merely inspires poorly emulated ports on touchscreens and cheap stocking filler replica consoles filled with some of its worst games and memories. The Mega Drive deserves better than this. Join me on a quest to uncover its long forgotten treasures as we travel back to my favourite era in gaming. This is a retrospective with a difference. This is Retrocity. Every good product needs a mascot, an exciting character to entice you into the brand. Nintendo have Mario, McDonald's have Ronald McDonald, and when Sega launched the Mega Drive in 1989, they chose... Alex Kidd. Alex Kidd is not a great mascot. He can't eat a mushroom to increase in size or shoot a fireball if he collects the right flower. Alex's life consists of scrounging together enough pennies to buy himself additional lives from St. Peter whenever he gets killed. This game is full of so many terrible ideas. You play rock, paper, scissors to win vehicles. Don't worry if you're unfamiliar with the rules, the game lets you practice from the main menu. And Alex becomes really vulnerable in mid-air because he doesn't always stick his leg out to kick foes. You can counterintuitively kick downwards, don't ask, to unlock hidden passages underground, but you won't want to. You'll want to let the soil surround you and bury him alive. Luckily, my Mega Drive didn't come with Alex Kid. It came with this. Let's face it, I will probably dedicate an episode of Retrocity to Sonic at some point. If you haven't played Sonic the Hedgehog by now, please stop watching this video immediately and go play it, or I will not be your friend. Sonic caused a surge in popularity for the Mega Drive in both the USA and Europe, giving the console a cool edge over the Super Nintendo. Unfortunately, he also encouraged the rise of knockoffs, anthropomorphic animals with attitude, each in their own generic platform world. One of the worst is Bubsy the Bobcat, a game that seems specifically designed to inflict maximum torture on its victims. You'll need every one of Bubsy's nine lives to make it through the game, not because it's particularly challenging, but because he controls like his feet are made of butter. Everything kills you in this game. Water kills you. Falling kills you. Aliens. Giraffes. Pianos. Gumball machines. Giant f***ing hot dogs. Bubsy has this strange inertia that causes him to glide over safe spots like a feather in an updraft, usually into the paths of something lethal. And why are we collecting all this wool? What possible knitting project requires that much yarn? I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise to my mother for coercing her into buying me this game. Sorry mum. People were just taking animals and exaggerating their proportions and throwing them into two-dimensional hubsy and nightmares where every living creature wants to kill them. I can make one up right now. Um. Okay, let's take a cute animal. Here's a picture of a squirrel I took last year. Let's give him some attitude. And a hat. And let's change his colours a bit. And we'll give him an appealing name like uh, Mr. Nuts. Hello, Mr. Nuts isn't very cool, so let's change the S to a Z. Unfortunately, this has already been done. I guess there's a certain skill in taking the beauty of the natural world and turning it into something so bland and unevocative, but it doesn't really equate to an entertaining game. Not all of these platform games were terrible. Some of them were actually created for entertainment purposes rather than profit. Perhaps none were less likely to fill this role than Cool Spot, a game where you play a 7-up's erstwhile marketing mascot. He's is it. Making kids play as a pimple is like developing a game aimed at my granny where you play as a worn out hip socket. By all rights, it should be awful, but it's actually really good fun. It's developed by Virgin Games, who went on to make the Mega Drive version of Aladdin and Earthworm Jim. Spot has to collect enough scabs to free his friend at the end of each stage, so it turns into a bit of a treasure hunt. At least there's some vague point to collecting all this gravity defying crap for a change. The best level is called Off the Wall, unsurprisingly set inside a wall. Maybe that is surprising, I don't know. 
Bouncing off mouse traps while dormice throw lumps of cheese at you. Clever stage design. Fantastic Tommy Tallarico soundtrack. That's when it all clicks. It's challenging and frantic platforming with a real sense of control it's lacking from so many other generic platformers. If you collect enough platelets, you'll reach a bonus stage. A giant bottle of 7-Up, no less. And collect letters which spell out UNCOLA, which apparently was a marketing term for 7-Up. Um, in Northern Ireland where I grew up, it faced such stiff competition from Club Lemon that no one bothered to market it. Just sat in the back corner, gathering dust. Don't let Cool Spot gather dust. It's easily forgotten, but I promise you there are at least 7 minutes of fun to be had by playing it. We've come a long way, and yet, we've barely scratched the surface. This isn't even the end of the beginning. All good tales of an origin, and next time if you ask nicely, I'll tell you mine. See you soon.